Hey guys, we're here today doing a VGC Fire Pokemon tier list. If you guys enjoy this and you want to see some more content like it, like and subscribe and answer the comment question of the day. What's your favorite fire type Pokemon to be using in VGC or interesting competitive in general? Uh, my favorite this generation would probably honestly be Armourish. It's such a fun mon and it really just it's one of the first things on every one of my teams this gen. Uh, with that said though, let's get started with the tiers. So obviously we have our inaugural S tier. This is for Pokemon like Arceus that can kind of just do all, do everything. They're low drawback on teams. We don't have an S plus tier today. Uh, there was nothing I felt that personally deserves an S plus though. There's a lot of stuff that I think is close enough to deserving it uh but nothing in this format or just in this generation so far for fire types really screams at me that it is like an actual hindrance to not run this pokemon for fire and that that's okay uh the s plus though uh, the s tier is just for pokemon though that you still definitely at least are almost always putting on every given team the a tier is going to be for pokemon or you'll still commonly see you might not always be running it but you'll usually find it a, a good amount of times when practicing at least and it's something that every team should be handling uh, the B tiers are going to be for Pokemon that they're coming up every once in a while. Uh, you'll at least see it at a couple games in a laddering session, unironically, and it will just be ran with a multitude of different options. C tiers are going to really be core specific. This would be like, for example, if I ran a Mon because it really handles Talon Tusk well, but overall against pretty much everything else, it kind of fucking sucks, but it happened to handle that one core well, might get a C tier. Uh, D tier is going to be for YouTuber picks. These are essentially things that you would only see a YouTuber run, and maybe, I guess, if it's really your favorite Pokemon or something, but otherwise, you don't really see this Mon get usage. And the F tier is going to be for Pokemon that are either enemies and noteworthy, which we do not have any today, or for fully evolved Pokemon that are so bad, but they deserve to mention anyway. With that said, we've already gotten, obviously, the, uh, the Arceus Fire out of the way. Let's get into Charizard. Charizard honestly gets an A tier for sure. This is a really strong fire type in my opinion this generation, and thanks to stuff like Talonflame being really strong in this format, or just other priority Tailwind options, Charizard will definitely have a place on Sun Builds, in my opinion, in tandem with the Tailwind. Uh, this is one of those Pokemon that honestly can just go for Terra Fire and just massacre everything. It's essentially like Chiyu, but this thing also gets Solar Power, which is at least really good when Sun is up. It hits slightly harder, I think? It's either slightly harder or slightly weaker. It's pretty much near the same damage as Chiyu, though. And the typing, you, you have a lot of better coverage options, at least with your stabs. So you can definitely make Charizard work. Um, it's a really strong mon. I just think that it's natural typing of rock, of uh, flying and fire isn't exactly great. Having a four times weakness to one of the best moves in the game being stealth rocks isn't really something you want to be doing. And especially when your tower type is typically going to be a stab on Charizard, just because of the fact of how offensively potent you'd be using this thing for. Uh, it's definitely a really strong pick for sure, but it is with its flaws, of course. Definite A tier. Arcanine is an S tier. Truthfully, it's probably going to be the best Pokemon or one of the best on the tier list today. Uh, Arcanine is an incredible defensive option. It has stuff like Intimidate, Snarl, Will-O-Wisp, etc. Uh, this thing also can get... No, it, I don't think it actually gets Morning Sun this generation. Uh, but you still can take advantage of stuff like Citrus and Safety Goggles to keep this thing alive and functioning as well as possible. Uh, Arcanine, though, is essentially one of the best defensive options you can get. It's easily the best Intimidator in the generation right now. And I look forward to seeing what else we can get from Arcanine in Series 3 and beyond. Uh, this thing has been, been proving to be a really strong Terra option with stuff like Terra Water and Grass being vital options defensively. Meanwhile, you'll have stuff like Terra Dark also being good on certain matchups, or even Terra Normal being a really strong offensive option to try and be a really good choice band user uh, but definitely though Arcanine is an incredible piece it's really easy to fit on most teams and most teams do benefit a lot from having Arcanine easy S tier Arcanine to Sui form uh, this thing gets a, a D tier for sure uh, rock fire is an offensive typing is actually pretty fucking good and Arcanine to Sui and gets if nothing else some really strong actual moveset options uh, for example this thing gets the ability I think it gets arc uh, reckless uh, no, it gets Rockhead, but it's basically the same thing. Um, it doesn't take recoil from recoil moves. Uh, it's, you get stuff like Head Smash and Flare Blitz in your moveset, which makes this thing an incredible breaker, especially with Tailwind at a base 90 speed. You can really make a Sui and Arcanine into a lethal threat. Uh, even still, you do have options like Rock Slide in your moveset for spread in case you don't want to run Head Smash. And you do have a little bit more accuracy with this as well as the ability to flinch, which is pretty good. I think though that the natural Rock Fire typing isn't exactly worth running this mod for, but if you do tire this thing, it's actually a really good offensive nightmare. So we'll give this thing a B tier. Taurus, Plodea, and Blaze also gets a B tier. Uh, this gets right above the Hisui and Arcanine. Uh, despite the fact that both these get Intimidate, the Fire Fighting typing is naturally speaking a lot better. And despite the fact that Hisui and Arcanine has an incredible coverage set, I do think that the fact that Tauros hits base 100 speed is also pretty appreciated here. 
Uh, as far as Taurus, Paldea, and Blaze goes, uh, one of the biggest benefits this thing has is the ability, uh, is the signature move Raging Bull, which is essentially a 90 base power stab for Tauros that turns to a fire type attack, and it can break screens. It's like a stronger brick break, which is honestly pretty cool. Overall though, Taurus is definitely a really good pick for a team. I just think that it's a little bit lackluster in comparison to at least Cantonian Arcanine as an Intimidate option, so we're going to give it a B tier. Uh, this thing gets the D tier. Uh, it really only gets a D tier because of the fact that you get Terra Normal plus Guts Facade, and that's really the only thing you could actually benefit with this mod for, in my opinion. I think any other moveset you're running on this thing is essentially just a guaranteed choke, but it's a decent enough trick room there, and it has a nice niche considering the fact that its previous stab is also really good against steals. Really, the only other thing that would actually do that would be something like a Hariyama. So we're going to give this thing a D tier off of just, I guess, the Terra Normal Guts Facade set. Uh, Moltres. Moltres also honestly probably gets a D tier, but it's right above the, uh, it's right above the fucking, the Flareon. Uh, Moltres isn't really that great this generation. Uh, for one, if we look at Moltres' moveset, you do end up actually lacking in a few different areas. Uh, while you do have Hurricane and you do have Heat Wave, at the same time though, your coverage outside of that is pretty shit. Uh, your next best means of actually attacking stuff would probably be Ancient Power and then Solar Beam. Solar Beam somehow makes a cut outside of Terra Blast, which is kind of, kind of insane. Uh, now, Moltres is an incredible option as far as Terra goes, but the base 90 speed and the pre-typing of Fire Flying, I just think you may as well run something like a Charizard, a Talonflame, or really just any other Terra Flying Pyre type Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I, I think Moltres is an okay pick at best this generation. Flame Body is a pretty cool means of running for this Pokemon, uh, but at the same time though, I think that Moltres just, you may as well just run any other bird in my opinion we'll give this thing a d tier it's just better than player on considering the fact that you could probably justify this thing in more than just a hyper specific archetype uh so yeah typhlosion's up next uh typhlosion honestly gets a d tier as well i think that this form gets a c tier though really this is just typhlosion with a slightly worse speed tier but you do get a secondary stab which is honestly really good fire ghost is incredible typing uh, and you hit a good amount harder too, a whole base 10 harder, which is pretty cool as far as the special offense goes. Uh, base type version though still has a bit going for it. Flash fire as an immunity is pretty valuable. We've seen that already functioning really well on Terra Legend Armourish. So credit where due. This thing does still keep eruption. However, I believe the Hisuian form also still keeps eruption. Yes, it does. Uh, so that's honestly pretty good for it. Uh, you also get stuff like Infernal Parade on the Hisuian form, which means essentially that you have 30% chance to burn and you do double damage to any target that is status. So it's not only Hex, but it also has a chance to burn, which is pretty fucking cool. Uh, it's going to be a really good mod in the very least on Tailwind teams, if nothing else. Uh, and then I think that I uh, can uh, not Cantonian. Uh, Jetonian Typhlosion is just going to be an inferior version of Hisuian. They'll both be fine enough, but definitely C and D tier respectively. Hanum gets an F tier. Really shit mon. Typing is kind of average, and especially compared to other fire types, it already has a lot of competition. Considering you have stuff like the Typhlosion form Hisuian, you have the base Typhlosion as well as uh, Paldea and Tauros outpacing it. You have Arcanine tying. You have stuff like Hisuian and Arcanine being five base under it, as well as Moltres. It's a lot of competition for that moose, uh, for that uh, speed tier. And the fact that this thing is already also extremely frail for being a mon that's only base 95 speed, definite F tier for sure. Camera up gets a D tier. This is honestly a pretty cool Terra pick. I think that with Solid Rock, this thing is actually kind of underexplored. We saw it go six and three recently at, I believe it was Charlotte, Re not Charlotte Regional, so that's the one I'm going to in a couple days. Uh, but this is definitely at least uh, it was, I think it was, nope, not Liverpool, it was Knoxville, Knoxville Regionals, I think, um, I'm pretty sure it was Knoxville Regionals, that had the camera up, team goes like 6-3, and three. um, yeah, camera up, uh, yeah, camera up, 6-3, 72 seed overall, I knew I remembered this thing doing well at a regional recently, uh, but yeah, honestly, I think Camera Up has a bright future in this format. I cannot wait to see what Camera Up actually ends up doing. The Solid Rock plus Eruption Choice Spec set is a really good way of beating Torkoal while having a really good natural defensive typing. You can also go for something like a Terra Water if you want to get something a little bit more not stab oriented, or even Terra Grass can be pretty cool. Uh, but you have a lot of different options as far as Camera Up's Terra go. I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing actually ends up doing because I could see a place in Camera Up's future where this thing ends up even rising in the rankings and being an almost viable Terra Captain for Trick Room. But for now, it's going to be D tier. Torkoal gets an S tier. This thing gets right above Arcanine. I'm uh, not right above Arceus. 
Uh, now, the biggest reason that this thing gets above Arceus is because of the fact that this is one of the slowest Pokemon in Trick Room of all time, and with stuff like Choice Specs, Terrifier, Eruption, you're going to hit obnoxiously hard. Now, Arceus is still an incredible pick, but I think that Torgal just offers a lot more to its team as well, with stuff like the Drought being really good for past Paradox Mons, as well as the Ligand. So, we're going to give Torkoal the S tier for sure. Uh, it has a lot that it's been adopting to recently, whether it's running Clear Smog for Dozo matchups, or even Yawn just as a good defensive backbone. Uh, we've seen Quick Claw as well being a really good adaptation to Torkoal, because it's essentially Torkoal that can hit really well outside of Trick Room, without depending on Lilligant, which is actually pretty good. Uh, so, we've seen a lot of different Torkoal adaptations that I think are all kind of viable, but I'm curious to see where Torkoal ends up going in the future. It's a mod that definitely I think will end up doing consistently well as the format ages on, but for now, we're still pretty new. Uh, definitely S tier for sure though. Rotom Heat gets a B tier. This thing definitely gets the front of the B tier though. It's a really strong Rotom form offensively speaking, and it's a really good means of handling a Moongus, which is something that none of the other forms besides Frost and Fan can do. Uh, though one benefit this thing does have is it has the best stab to do so with the fire and electric typing being incredible offensively speaking. Not only this, but it handles a lot of stuff that Rotom Wash with Terrifier would do without even needing to Terrastal. You can throw something like a safety goggles onto this mod and be a really good offensive piece that can't even be redirected away from just targeting opposing grasses as well as opposing waters. So honestly, Rotom Heat definitely gets a really strong B tier for me. I think it's one of the best B tiers we're going to have today. Now, I feel like we're going to definitely have some better Pokemon, but for now, definitely one of the better ones. Heatran. Heatran in this format would honestly be an S. Uh, no, I don't know. It'd be a top of A tier, actually. Um, One thing that I will say that gets a little bit out of Heatran's favor is the speed tier. Base 77 speed is not that great, and especially when Heatran actually did lose Eruption, it lost probably one of the best niches this thing could have had. Now, Fire Steel is an incredible typing, and especially when you can tear around that ground weakness into something like a Terra Flying, which would be pretty decent for opposing fighting matchups as well. I do think that with that in mind, that Heatran definitely does hurt a little bit from a lack of eruption. If Heatran kept eruption, I think it would be a borderline S pick, but I think without it though, with the fact that your strongest means of attacking with a spread fire move is Heatwave, it's definitely honestly just not the same as clicking eruption. We've seen from stuff like Torkoal and Camera Up where they can just outright invalidate teams with eruption, and having a Mon and Tailwind that can do that would have been really cool. However, now that Mon is going to be Charizard because Heatran kind of jumped the gun here. It's pre terra typing that was a lot better than Charizard's, and it's also got still a pretty amazing move pool and the Im immunity with uh, Flash Fire, which is also going to be pretty valuable. Whereas Charizard is going to end up killing itself off in the sun, this thing is outright a really good anti sun option. So I got to give it to Heatran. This is definitely an A tier pick for sure. Volcarona gets a B tier, uh, not a, a B tier, an A tier. This thing is the very front of A tier, uh, with stuff like Struggle Bug and Heat Wave being really good options on this thing offensively. You can typically take advantage of Quiver Dance, Tailwind, Rage Powder sets. All of them are very valuable. Uh, this thing has a lot of good items as well that it can run, whether it's Citrus Berry, uh, Covert Cloak for Terra Water sets, Lumberry, uh, Focus Sash, etc. You can make this thing into a really good support piece as well as a really good offensive piece. The fire bug typing honestly is also not even that bad pre-terra. Uh, it's really good for checking stuff like Fluttermane and Iron Hands to a degree, I guess. And it especially for the Iron Hands matchup allows you to get a really free Willow S buff into that spot. So it's definitely something to be keeping an eye on for sure. I think Volcaron is still a really good pick, but it's definitely fallen off a bit since the glory days, so we're gonna give it an A tier for sure. Uh, we're going to have Pyro up next. Really shit mon. This thing honestly doesn't deserve an ounce of my breath, but the video is running short, so I guess I'm just going to take a little bit of time to say that Pyro fucking sucks. I don't know why this thing is so bad, but it's probably going to be the worst fire type, or at least one of the worst fire types that we ranked today. Um, and I really hate that I had to waste a breath on this thing. F tier. Uh, Delphox. Delphox is interesting. Uh, this thing got Nasty Plot, which is actually a pretty good benefit for it. I'm going to proceed to give Delphox a C tier. I think this thing could actually have a merit on maybe some sort of uh, Tailwind team. Uh, considering the fact that you do also get this ability Magician, which means that if you have no item, you'll actually steal the item of the Pokemon that you attack, which is honestly a pretty decent ability in terms of stealing random items from opponents that are really item dependent. Uh, especially if you were to pair this maybe with like a Covert Cloak, uh, like a Guard Tackle, you could steal Covert Cloaks, which is pretty good. Uh, this thing has some good coverage though. You get stuff like, for example, Dazzling Gleam, and with Terra Fairy, that could be pretty destructive. You also get stuff like Flamethrower, Heat Wave, Psychic. Uh, sadly, no Expanding Force. It's a little unfortunate. If this thing had Expanding Force, this would probably honestly be an A tier. 
Uh, but because of the fact that it lacks expanding force, it's a pretty big nerf for Han Delphox. So we're going to actually give this thing a C tier, bottom of C tier. I think it's still going to be a viable enough pick though. Talonflame gets an S tier. It's the weakest S tier we currently have though. Uh, despite the fact that this is one of the beneficiaries of one of the strongest offensive cores right now being Talon Tusk, at the same time, Talonflame has just kind of fallen out a little bit. I feel like a lot of teams are just adapting Talonflame's role with the Gale Wings priority tailwind into other stuff like bulky tailwind roaring moon uh bulky tailwind dragonite bulky tailwind salamence uh really just those sort of bulky tailwind options or really just some other form of speed control entirely whether it's weather or even trick room potentially so while talent flame is definitely not a bad option i feel like it's definitely been getting phased out of viability as far as this format goes uh, realistically, I feel like that there's been a lot more times recently than not that I've actually just completely benched Talonflame on my Talonflame teams. So I'm curious to see where the format ends up going as far as later seasons go. I think Talonflame will still be a viable pick objectively, uh, but it is definitely one of, if not the weakest S tiers we currently have, but it is still an S tier. Volcanion. Volcanion is still a really strong pick. Honestly, with Terra, this thing is kind of a nightmare, offensively speaking. With Water and Fire, you have some really strong stab options, and the fact this thing still keeps Steam option is really good for it. Um, as far as Volcanion's typing goes, with the Fire Water, you can make this work into a really good option. Whether it's a pure Fire type that's still going to have an immunity to Water attacks thanks to Water Absorb. Uh, or you can even use this as like a Terra Ground or Rocks typing and get some really good coverage for opponents that way. Especially with Terra Rock being a really good means of just checking different, uh, different Fire types. Specifically Fire types that might be a little bit benefiting from the sun being up at least. Uh, overall, you have a lot of different options that can really benefit Volcanion and turn it into an hour and offensive monster. And I look forward to seeing how good Volcanion ends up doing in later formats. Easily, in my opinion, this thing would get the... I think, honestly, this thing would get the bottom of A. I think it's a little bit too weak as far as moves it gets, considering it does get Heat Wave, but it does miss out on Eruption as well. And it's not really going to get some other utility, like something, for example, that Heatran would get, just having a much better natural defensive typing. So we're going to give this thing an A tier for sure. Just, it's going to be bottom of A. Up next is Salazzle. Uh, with Oblivious plus Fake Out, this thing actually has a kind of okay niche. Uh, Salazzle definitely is one of the more interesting options of this ability, considering you also have Corrosion, which is a pretty good ability. Uh, Salazzle gets some cool moves like Encore and Disable, as well as Fake Out. You can utilize this Mon as a T-Spike setter, which is pretty good if you need to fake out Mon for your Dozo Kiri teams. Uh, this thing has pretty okay options as far as offense and defense goes. I'm inclined to give this thing a C tier, but like top of C tier, very top of C tier. Um, but I'm not sure. This thing might move up a little bit. I think that C tier is pretty generous though for what it's worth. Uh, or Corio. This thing gets a C tier. It's like a bottom of C tier. Actually, I'll put it right above Delphox and Typhlosion, just considering the fact that this thing gets Quiver Dance now, which is at least a way to viably set up its speed, which is something that Oracorio did lack for a while, a way to set up without actually having to rely on the Dancer ability or just a partner Pokemon in general, uh, which honestly, this is a pretty big deal for Oracorio. Having the ability to set up this makes Oracorio typing of Fire Flying actually fairly unique. It is one of the only Fire Flying types that actually has a means of setting up on its own without having to utilize something like, uh, well, at least in its viable side, I should say, because technically speaking, Charizard could, I guess, go for like a Dragon Dance, and that's good and all, but it's not really like a great way to use your Charizard. I feel like it's almost impractical. Uh, but regardless, though, this, uh, this, oh my god, I'm forgetting. Um, where did I even put them on? Uh, fuck. Oh, Slazzle. This Slazzle is honestly kind of just a whatever mon. It's fine enough in the tier, um, but it's definitely gonna get a C tier, in my opinion. Colossal, this thing also honestly gets a C tier. We'll put it right above or Corio. Uh, C mentions a really cool ability, obviously, and the ability to pop this thing in tandem with something like a Lava Plume Pokemon or even like a Surf Pokemon such as Dragapult, you can pretty easily make this work. Uh, I've seen even especially like the weakness policy sets that are running Lava Plume and like a Terra Grass or like a Water Absorb. Well, not a Water Absorb, a Water type move such as Surf plus the Terra Rock. And you're able to benefit off of the fact that you have your Spin F boost, which is pretty valuable. Uh, but overall, though, Cole definitely is a really strong pick. I think it's a little bit underexplored right now, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it does the rest of the generation. Uh, this thing, in my opinion, definitely gets a C tier, and it's a pretty strong C tier at that. 
I could see this thing moving up to like top of C in my opinion, but I feel like that I think that Salazzle's role is a little more unique as far as fire types go. Not to say that Colossal's isn't, but the fact that we have a lot of other fire types that can boost speed such as Tailwind Talonflame, uh, it makes this thing a little bit harder to justify. So we'll give this thing a D tier. Uh, not a D tier, a C tier. Uh, Cinderace. Cinderace would be an incredible option. I'm going to give this thing in the front of A. I don't feel comfortable giving this thing an I that i don't think feel comfortable giving this thing an s tier in my opinion i think cinderace is a little bit of a power creep issue when we compare it to last generation where cinderace was able to run stuff like sun and it was a really good just general option as far as the uh as far as the libero ability goes uh now that you can't change your terror type once you've clicked a setup option or just any other option in general you can no longer change it again i think it definitely hurts cinderace for what it's worth it was a really good option as far as just molding its coverage into whatever the fuck you needed it for and I think it's the best way to use Cinderace. However, I feel like the later generations have kind of gotten lost out of that, uh, which I guess is whatever. But just why not keep the why not keep the Cinderace and doing a really good job without having to get nerfed? Overall, this thing definitely gets an A tier at the top of A tier at that. Skeletors, Skeletors honestly proves to be a really good B tier threat. I think it's right above Taurus Paldean form as far as uh, just general Trick Room Terramonts. Uh, it's a really good wall for just beating stuff like, for example, Dendozo really well. Uh, as you do have the ability Unaware, which is able to essentially make sure that you have no way to be beaten as far as the ability goes. On top of this as well, obviously I have the ability to just start taking advantage of breaking anything with Torch Song, which is a really good means of setting up your special attack. And you can continue to snowball the special attack further and further and further until your opponents just get overwhelmed by this thing. So it's definitely a really good defensive option that unlike something such as Clefable or Gastrodon, uh, not Gastrodon, uh, Quagsire, ends up having the unaware ability in a solely defensive Pokemon, you could actually make Skeletor into a pretty good offensive threat here. So I'm definitely going to give this thing a strong B tier. Scovillain's up next. Uh, Scovillain's kind of weak. Uh, this thing gets a D tier, but it's like top of D tier considering the fact that this thing technically does benefit off of Sun, which is a pretty viable playstyle right now. Uh, you can go for stuff like Rage Powder and Sleep Powder and just start bullying Sun teams that way or bullying opposing teams that way if you're running Sun. At the same time though, I feel like this mod is just a little bit inconsistent and even with the strong tire typing such as Fairy, I feel like that overall this thing is definitely objectively a little bit of an unfortunate mod. So we're going to give this thing an a D tier. I was almost going to say E tier, but it's definitely a D tier. Uh, Iron Moth. Now, Iron Moth is a benefiting Pokemon of one of the strongest, especially offensive cores, being Iron Moth Fluttermane. So you can utilize Iron Moth essentially as a really good way to drop Dendo's special defense thanks to the Acid Spray ability. Well, not the Acid Spray ability, the Acid Spray move, which essentially allows you to get a minus two drop on your opponent's spidef, which is pretty valuable in my opinion. On top of this as well, Iron Moth is an incredible booster energy option considering the fact that you have booster energy speed, and this allows Iron Moth by cutting a little bit of a special attack to be a really fast, really hard revenge off Pokemon. Now, a lot of teams do also obviously run the uh, special attack boosting set. Some teams don't run booster energy at all and they'll go with life orb instead. Uh, some teams go with just a terror type, whether it's fairy, fire, grass, water, bug, poison, etc. You can make pretty near every terror type work, especially the fire, water, grass, uh, poison, uh, the dark, I want to say, is a kind of viable option. And then there's a couple others I'm sure that I missed, but overall, Iron Moth definitely belongs in the S tier. I think it's right above Talonflame personally. And despite the fact that Talonflame has a little bit more usage right now, I think that as the format adapts over these next like last couple weekends or so, then we're going to see that Iron Moth really is just a slightly better option here. Uh, but regardless, we do have three more Pokemon left for today's list, and they're all really strong ones. Chiyu gets the top of S tier. I think Chiyu has one unique benefit that even Arcanine doesn't get, and it's the fact that you have the ability Beads of Ruin. And Beads of Ruin is a spread ability that even when your opponent switches, they cannot get around it unless they switch into their own Chiyu, and even then it only cancels it out for the Chiyu spot. Essentially, this drops the opponent's spidef by 25%, and it's an aura ability similar to how like we had Fairy Aura and Dark Aura. This is just an aura ability. Uh, but it's a really good one at that though. Uh, this makes Chiyu into an incredibly potent offensive piece, and essentially it's a really good win con for a majority of players. Uh, overall, I would say that Chiyu definitely belongs in that top of S plus on uh, that uh, S tier. You can maybe make a case that this thing belongs in an S plus tier. However, I don't really think that just to put Jose in there and no one else that we need an S plus tier as far as our ratings go. And not only this, but I think that overall the S plus tier just doesn't really make a big difference this time around. Uh, we have Armourish up next. Armourish is a great mon in terms of just benefiting off the Trick Room teams. Uh, this is a great option as well with the weak armor sets. We've seen these on ladder all the time where someone will run like a weakness policy 
Arm Rouge next to a Terra... Well, uh, not a Terra Grass. Just like a Terra Ghost Iron Bundle that's going to go for U-Turn. You typically go for like a Terra Grass there. You take the U-Turn and then you bring in your real partner Pokemon, which is typically speaking in DD. And then you can utilize the Arm Rouge just to really start cleaning up games and stuff like Weak Policy plus the Expanding Force as well as the Heat Wave, Armor Cannon, etc. Uh, this has proved to be a really strong offensive option as far as special offensive teams go, and with the flash fire ability, this is able to boost its attacks even further, while also slowing a really strong immunity to opposing armors and DT, and even to Torkoal. So this thing honestly gets a really strong S tier. I'm going to put it right above the Torkoal in all honesty. I think that the Sass Bam is a little bit more influential right now. Now, it's not to say that you obviously aren't going to get really good results out of weather or other playstyles in the S tier, but I do think that that uh, armor is being one of the most consistently used options, and it still is usually a pretty terrifying one, that we got to give it recognition and put it in the top three for today's list. Now, we do have one final Pokemon today, and that's going to be none other than Seratledge. Now, Seratledge is a pretty interesting case. I think this is something that ultimately depends on the metagame, and Seratledge definitely has some ebbs and flows, but overall, I think I'm going to give Seratledge the top of B tier. I think a Seratledge, if nothing else, has a really good terror typing with thanks to Steel, which I know you've been obviously seeing lately through just random terror steel sets for this mon that are actually no because that team will be tomorrow uh remind me tomorrow you guys will see the terror steel sets actually from terror ledge it's a really good offensive piece though with steel it's a great way to resist stuff like expanding force armors while having the built-in immunity thanks to flash fire uh you could in theory make a weakness policy set work but i think that armors typically does it a lot better especially with just really dedicated bulk that this thing has to fizz def and the fact that a lot more of the metagame shifts in the physical side having the slightly lower speed f stat oh the slightly lower defensive stat being in fizz def i didn't really feel confident in having uh just any sort of weakness policy on this pokemon to be completely honest uh which is why we typically do throw this thing on armorage instead also the spreader option is a lot more appreciated on armorage as it is a primary special attacker so we're gonna definitely take that but i think unfortunately guys this is gonna be the end of our video for today if you enjoyed and you want to see some more content like it of course like and subscribe for more and shout out to channel members being josh k ultra player mia zeke zero matt o'shea b bat anna Dupur, timo Mueller, and fonzie your guys support on the channel is greatly appreciated and if you want to become a channel member today for only a couple dollars a month you can support the channel and get some bonus content every once in a while uh it's usually a couple times a month on our last video for the month will be going up on march 31st so i hope to see you guys then otherwise peace oh answer the common question of the day um peace out guys